in Weber State Special Collections, we're actually responsible for documenting the history of Weber and Davis counties. And so we have over 350 manuscript collections and about 175 different photograph collections. And with the manuscript collections, it can range from corporate archives to club records to family records. And some of my most favorite things are the family records because not only do you get the correspondence between family members, but a lot of times, especially in the early 1800s, 1900s, people kept diaries something that a lot of people don't do anymore. And so these are diaries that are written daily accounts of events that happened in the local area to these local families. So the diaries we're gonna look at today are um, a series of diaries from 1884 to 1964 um, that were kept by Dr. Edward Israel Rich and his wife Elmira Rich. Dr. Rich was one of the first doctors um, here in Ogden. He was actually born up in Idaho, um, went to medical school out in Philadelphia, um, came back in 1894 and decided he wanted to marry Elmira. They had been best friends um, throughout that time while he was at medical school, but she said she wouldn't marry him until he had a practice already established. So he moved to Ogden, bought a house, rented a building, and started his medical practice here, and then they were married shortly after that. This journal that we're going to start with is actually Elmira's journal from 1918, which of course was a very interesting year in not only local but national news as well. Um, one of my favorite entries is this one here for October 26, 1918, where she writes, Busy with housework all morning. This afternoon went to a meeting to send box, to prepare boxes, Christmas boxes. Went with a family for an auto ride this afternoon. Mary is knitting her socks. Doctor has treated over 150 cases of influenza and lost three who developed pneumonia. He has made calls until 11 p.m. for the last two days. It actually got fairly large. They shut down any social meetings, gatherings, so there were no church services, no school, um, anything. Even when the soldiers were coming home after Armistice Day, they weren't going to allow their family members to go downtown to greet them. But unfortunately, well, fortunately, the family members disregarded that and went downtown as well um, to meet them because they said they've been away at war. So this is um, from 1942. Again, it's from Elmira. And this one, she's talking about the tuberculosis um, outbreak that happened here in Ogden. This is November 2nd. I attended med medical auxiliary at Joan Ebbets, small attendance, superintendent of Tuberculous Hospital of Ogden, gave a splendid talk on conditions here in Ogden regarding the number of tuberculous cases in the hospital. Also stressed the dangers of its spread through the influx of hundreds of people coming into our city. Many having aches and our schools are in danger of spreading since no examination is made of either teachers or students. Also, public places are crowded, etc. Did some shopping. It's really interesting to read through them and you get not only the daily occurrences that happen in the family, you know, so-and-so was born or grandma came to visit today or I washed laundry and baked bread, but then they also talk about some of the important local and national events that were happening as well. He talks about operating um, and, of course, before 1910, there wasn't actually a hospital in Ogden for the public. So most of those operations happened on the kitchen table in the people's homes. So if you had appendicitis, he would come to your house and clean your table and operate on you there. So this is 1954, and this is Dr. E.I. Rich's diary. And where we're going to skip to is January 6th, 1954, the day Elmira passes. Mother called me at 2 a.m., she had severe pain in her chest and left arm. I gave her Demerol, but while she was relieved of some pain, she did not rest. I remained awake and at frequent intervals gave her sedations. At 6.30, Dr. Jr. came over and gave her more Demerol in the vein. She slept for about two hours and then felt better. We took her to the D hospital at 10 a.m., and the cardiologist then took her and ran her through some tests. 
She was returned to the room and was fairly comfortable, but suddenly expired a few minutes later. Cleone was in the room with her, and Dr. Jr. was just outside of the room in the hall. She did not realize that death was so near. Dr. Rich actually ended up practicing for a total of 71 years. So he would have practiced slightly a little bit after she passed away, but then his health as well started to deteriorate. He had a lot of problems with his eyesight, but he was known for delivering over 5,000 babies here in Ogden. His medical legacy continued on because he had sons and then grandsons and further down who went into the medical field and became doctors of, in Ogden as well. Um, for me, having these journals really gives that glimpse into life here in Ogden during the early 1900s up to 1964. Um, it goes far beyond sort of the glossed over history of Ogden. You get down to some of the nitty gritty things where he talks about people being confined or being committed to insane asylums, um, events happening. She went to everything, every art opening, every um, social ball. Uh, she was there and she wrote about them.